Hey guys, this is Matt Brunet, and welcome to Movie News Weekly, hosted by Filmbook. Now, before we begin, let's take a look at what we got in this week's news, which includes theaters floating for IT, some Labor Day money, how to lose millions with a thousand planets before the blood sucking, episode 9, The Lost Director, the cast next to Prince Ali, Suicide Squad's new boss, from The Martian to The Merc, Indie Animation's Time to Shine, and more Minions money. So with that said, let's get things started. No matter what I would say about audiences really wanted to be scared or anything like that, or even if I make a little dumb joke or, you know, just how to make some kind of opening like this, it'll be an understatement no matter what. It, the latest horror film based on the Stephen King novel, sparked brand new life at the box office this weekend by blowing all expectations away with $117 million. On Friday alone, where it made $51 million, it already broke the record that was held by Hotel Transylvania 2, and its weekend total even surpassed the opening of both Hotel Transylvanias combined. Obviously, this would break several records, but the biggest that it earned was the biggest opening ever for the month of September, and the biggest opening ever in the fall season. The other new movie out this week, Home Again, had to sit in the sidelines of it, as it came into second place with $9 million. Following from behind include The Hitman's Bodyguard with less than $5 million, Annabelle Creation with $4 million, Wind River with more than $3 million, and Leap with $2.5 million. Well, at least some movies had fun last week. While the box office experienced its worst Labor Day weekend in recent years domestically, some movies in the international waters managed to do a pretty good job. The biggest movie that's finding some good profits is Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk, which opened in China last weekend, opening quite well with $30 million. In comparison, when it opened in North America on July 21st, it grabbed itself a $50 million start and stayed in first place for two weeks. As of this video, the movie made more than $290 million internationally and a worldwide total of $475 million. Interestingly enough, that's not the only Warner Brothers movie that's doing well overseas. Annabelle Creation also found some good traction as it boosted its box office score by $15.6 million. Other notable features that did some good international money at the box office during Labor Day include The Hitman's Bodyguard, Despicable Me 3, and American Made. It would take a thousand planets to destroy this man. Well, too bad Valerian did the job, though. The deputy CEO of Europa Corp, Edouard de Vestine, was fired due to the box office disaster of Vile Orion and the City of a Thousand Planets. In a statement, the company said, The shareholders board has decided to terminate the mandate of Edouard de Vestine as deputy CEO of Europa Corp, effective immediately. They reckon that the production activities, both TV and film, of the company Incognita are no longer compatible with the tenors of Mr. De Vecine as deputy CEO. With an estimated budget of around $180 million, the movie managed to become the biggest box office bomb of the year, where it only managed to make $40 million domestically. While it is doing well in China, the film only has a worldwide total of more than $170 million. In order for the company to break even, it would have to make a total of $400 million. Europa Corp has already managed to lose a total of $143 million this year. Before Van Helsing, before Jonathan, and before Mina, Dracula reigns supreme. Paramount Pictures has gotten the rights to make a prequel to the literary classic Dracula by Bram Stoker called Dracul. Considered as the first ever prequel to get the approval by the Bram Stoker estate, the film will be about the author at a young age where he would write the events on how he locked up a monster in an ancient tower. While the script was written by J.D. Barker and Dacre Stoker, the studio is looking to grab some of the team that made the recent horror hit Stephen King's It, including producers Barbara Muccietti and Roy Lee, along with director Andy Muccietti. The process of getting the rights went through several stages, including going through auctions, purchased by a few companies, and finally got in the hands of Paramount with the help of Angela Chang Kaplan and Wayne Alexander. 
There are very rare moments that would happen in the Star Wars universe, including a director that would stay during the entire production that isn't George Lucas. Disney officially announced that Colin Trevorrow will no longer be the director of Star Wars Episode 9. The company stated, Colin has been a wonderful collaborator throughout the development process, but we have all come to the conclusion that our visions for the projects differ. We wish Colin the best and will be sharing more information about the film soon. This would mark it as the third time in two years that a director had to leave a Star Wars movie. Back in 2015, Josh Trank of the Fantastic Four stepped down on the spin-off movie that would star Boba Fett, and during this summer, one of the biggest controversies in Hollywood was when Phil Lord and Chris Miller got fired due to creative differences for the Han Solo spin-off movie. There is no word yet on who will replace Trevorrow. The gang's all here! Well, okay, maybe a different gang than you would know. Disney has officially announced the full cast that will be appearing in Disney's live-action reboot of the 1992 animated hit Aladdin. The new actors added will be playing new roles created for the feature, including Nassim Pedrad as Jasmine's maid and confidant Dahlia, and Billy Magnuson as Prince Anders, a suitor who is looking for Jasmine's hand in marriage. They will be joining the cast that includes Naomi Scott, Mina Masood, Will Smith, Marowen Karzadi, Numan Akar, and the newly announced Navid Negaban as the Sultan. The movie will be written by John August and directed by Guy Ritchie, while La La Land songwriters Justin Paul and Benj Pasek will be writing two new songs for the movie. Disney has yet to announce a release date for the feature. And they finally found the man in charge of this crazy sequel. Gavin O'Connor has signed on with Warner Brothers in order to be both the writer and director of Suicide Squad 2. Some of O'Connor's previous works includes The Warrior, the recently released The Accountant, which is currently getting a sequel, and will soon be directing the Netflix police drama Seven Seconds. Beforehand, there were plenty of rumors that floated around regarding who would be the new director of the sequel to the Oscar-winning DC feature, including Mel Gibson and The Shallows' Joan Collette Sarah. While Warner Brothers has O'Connor on board, they have yet to officially sign back any of the actors from the first film, but it is expected that Jared Leto and Margot Robbie would return as the Joker and Harley Quinn respectively, since they have been confirmed to be in the spin-off film starring the two. The sequel is expected to come in theaters sometime in 2019. If he can put Matt Damon on Mars, he can certainly put the Merc with the Professor's crew. 20th Century Fox hired Drew Goddard to both write and direct the X-Men spin-off film X-Force. While the plot is kept under wraps, it is confirmed that Ryan Reynolds and Josh Brolin will appear in the feature as Deadpool and Cable respectively. The movie will be based on the comic of the same name that's also a spin-off of the first X-Men spin-off comic New Mutants, which was co-created by Rob Liefeld. Other than getting an Oscar nomination for writing The Martian, Goddard is also familiar with working with Marvel-based superhero works. He was credited as the creator of the Netflix series Daredevil and was originally going to direct the now-canceled Spider-Man spin-off film Sinister Six. The next film we'll see some of these X-Forces will be on Deadpool 2 on June 1st, 2018. It is the ultimate battle of independent animation. Animation is Film Festival has officially announced its lineup of independent animated features that will be competing each other. The new event, created by the Annecy International Film Festival and G-Kids, made this to be the first world-class animation film festival in America. The movies that will be in competition include The Breadwinner, The Big Bad Fox and Other Stories, Big Fish and Begonia, Bird Boy, The Forgotten Children, Lou Over the Wall, Mary and the Witch's Flower, Tehran Taboo, and Zombolenium. The festival also announced its list of the first jury, including Warner Animation Group's Alison Abate, DreamWorks Animation's Bonnie Arnold, critic and film historian Charles Solomon, Landmark Cinema's Mabel Tam, and Book of Life director Jorge Guterres. The festival will be happening in Hollywood on October 20th through the 22nd, and tickets will be available on September 20th at animationisfilm.com. Not even Gru and Drew could make a heist that big. Despicable Me 3 became the 31st movie to ever make $1 billion at the worldwide box office. 
The result is mostly thanks to the huge success that it has internationally, since it made more than $740 million overseas, while having an additional $259 million domestically. This would make this film the sixth animated feature to cross that landmark, the third movie to do so this year behind the live-action remake of Beauty and the Beast and The Fate of the Furious, the second non-Disney animated feature to do so, and the biggest of them all, Despicable Me is the first animated franchise in history to have two animated films that made more than a billion dollars. Chris Melodandry, the head of Illumination Entertainment, stated, The enduring success of Despicable Me and Minions is a testament to the extraordinary talent of the team at Illumination and Illumination MacGuff, combined with the world's greatest studio, Universal. Our passion for creating memorable experiences is on display in Despicable Me 3, and we thank fans for taking this chapter to a billion dollar milestone. And that's all I've got for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to head on down to film-book.com for all the latest movie and TV news, along with their columns on the box office and their theatrical release schedule. Also, you can follow them on whatever social media you'd like. And while you're at it, you can follow me on my YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter if you're more into stuff like animation, Disney, and my weird sense of humor. If you are watching this on YouTube, then hit that like button and come subscribe to us, and also leave a little comment on what you think on the news this week. If you are listening to this on a podcast on iTunes or any other podcast service, then don't forget to rate and review what you just heard. Tune in next time for another round of Movie News Weekly, and until next week... See you later, dudes!